guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Dude. Oh, welcome back to my channel. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm doing my first mass making session at my new craft um, <laughs> craft situation. Uh, yeah, I'm obviously still in the process of sorting my room, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm here doing my uh, mass making session. So for those of, those of you who um, follow my channel, you'll know that we are doing reruns. So we are week number 141. Um, but we are rerunning week number 41. Um, so what we are mass making this week, we are doing layered butterflies. I mean, as you can see, I've barely used any of my layered butterflies since the last mass make because I have folded them. Yeah, ridiculous. I talked about this in the last video, but you know, <laughs> I make these things and then I can't bring myself to use them because they're so cute, aren't they? So yes, I do have quite a lot of these left, but hey, I'm going to make some more today and then hopefully I might actually even get round to using some of them. Um, so this is what we're mass making. If you're wanting to make along, what you are going to need is obviously a variety of papers. Now I tend to layer these with um, either sheet music or book page. I'm not going to be able to find any book page ones here. Oh yep, yeah, here we go, here's a book page one. So the layers are, yeah, either sheet music or book page. They tend to be, you know, I tend to make them three layers thick. And then the front layer of your, you know, your butterfly. I have got a template here for if I want to do freehand or freestyle butterflies, which look like this. Or, of course, you can use printables or, you know, die cuts and things like that that you've got in a butterfly shape and use them as your template for your layers. So, of course, I've brought along um, a bunch of my butterflies, you know, from some of my kits. I've got my bright butterflies from my bright butterfly kit. And I've also got some butterflies which are in my junk journal basics essentials kit. Um, and I will just kind of intermix um, the two and kind of, yeah, just use kind of a variety of the, the you know, the two. Um, and then I've also got here a bunch of papers that I have kind of um, inked and painted and made up. So for instance, here, I've got one of these inked papers. I mean, how gorgeous does that look? Um, and we could do that as a kind of top layer of a butterfly with some, say, sheet music underneath. Now I have to say, I have always, like I say, just, you know, <laughs> weirdly just used the sheet music and the um, book page beneath. But I guess there's no reason why you couldn't actually layer them up with, you know, for instance, if I did them on this paper, why you couldn't have then three layers of this. I suppose really just being stingy, it seems like a bit of a waste because a lot of this would be hidden, if that makes sense. Sorry, just having a sip of my tea there. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of, um, you know, probably why I shy away from doing that. Uh, so you're going to need, obviously, some butterflies. Now, my template, and I know that I did talk about this when I did the last video, what I did to get my template, and it looks absolutely awful there, but I don't think it looks too bad, you know, once it's cut into the sheet music, if you see what I mean. I think it, you know, takes on a better appearance then. Um, so what I did to get my template was I just Google imaged butterfly template and Google image that and then find one that you think is a good size, a good shape, you know, something quite straightforward to cut round, nothing too complicated. Um, and then I just took some transparency or acetate and I took a Sharpie. Now, be careful that you don't draw on your screen, but I just put my acetate up against the computer screen and then I drew round it with my Sharpie and then obviously cut round that. And then because I wanted something a bit more robust, I then obviously put that onto cardboard. So that's my template. So that's how I got my template. But of course, you know, you may have other methods or, you know, of course, you could use one of your die cut shapes or one of your fussy cut sh shapes and then just use that as your shape for your butterfly. You know, just because obviously this has got the butterfly printed on it. There's no reason why you couldn't perhaps just cut this out onto, you know, sheet music or something using that as your shape. Um, so just play around and experiment and see, you know, what you think looks good. And then what you're going to need is obviously some glue to glue your layers together. You're going to need the book page or sheet music or, you know, whatever you're making your layers up from. And then you're going to need something for the centres. Now, this, again, it's not essential. It's, you know, completely optional. But what I quite like to do is put either, for instance, here, the bling, you know, my favourite thing, the bling in the centres. That works really, really nicely. Or like here, I've got just a little mulberry paper flower 
and then just put a little gem in the center. So I mean, just kind of, um, you know, play around and experiment and see what you think looks nice. You could maybe, I haven't tried this, but you could maybe put um, an eyelet or something in the center. You know, maybe that would create an interesting look. Um, you could put something like um, a brad in the center, something like that, or just a gem. Or I have got these fabric flower trims, which I've got from Amazon. I think I got these from Amazon. They could have been from eBay, actually. I can't remember. I've had them for a while. Um, you could put stuff like this in the centre. So if I just kind of show you, I mean, obviously this is my scrappy template, you know, so I mean, obviously it looks a bit rubbish, but you could do something like that in the centre and that would work great too. So, you know, just experiment around and kind of have a play about. You could also, and again, this I haven't tried, but I'm just, um, you know, toying around with ideas in my head really, but if you've got, um, you know, much smaller butterflies, so for instance here, this is my Martha Stewart butterfly, you know, punch butterflies, you could maybe put these in the centre and that would look quite cute. So you'd have your four layers going on and then you could have this as your final layer. You know, just play around and see what looks nice. So yeah, I might just keep those here and um, do a couple like that. Uh, scissors, yep, we've said that, and the glue. And then, of course, you might want to ink up with your, you know, Distress Ink if you want to go for that sort of look. So let's get started and, um, yeah, make some of these. So I'm going to take my sheet music as my first ones. Now, if I just separate this out so I haven't got such a big amount here. So I'm going to use my template, obviously, to just demonstrate the first, you know, the first one or two that I do. So I'm just going to cut it across here. Now, also, you might want to position your sheet music so that you get quite a bit of the sheet music bit, you know, on your butterfly. Because, you know, if you positioned it, say, like that, you've not got very much sheet music on there. You've just got a bit through the middle and a tiny little bit at the top. So you might want to kind of position it where you get the maximum, you know, the maximum bits covered I suppose so I'm just going to cut that down and then what you can do is obviously just fold this around like that and then you can cut them all at the same time now the other thing that I thought and I didn't do this before but I'm wondering whether this might work so I'm just going to try this um or you know do this in the regular way first and then we will try what suddenly occurred to me this morning because I always try and re-watch um, certainly a little bit of the video to remember you know how I've done things um, you know because obviously I filmed this a couple of years ago the you know the first one so yeah it's hard to remember kind of what you know what methods you kind of used back then um, but just cutting like that now I think previously I did just cut individually which I may find again maybe that would be beneficial um, but I'm just trying to kind of speed up the process a little bit like that. So that's my butterfly. Now, obviously, if it looks a little bit scrappy and out of shape, it really doesn't matter because once you finish it up and put it together, you know, that's not going to be kind of no noticeable. So that's my three layers like that. Obviously, then you can just ink them up a, li a little bit. Now, I'm just using the obviously vintage photo, but I mean, to be honest, again, you could experiment a little bit, you know, with some other colours. And I really love that salvaged patina colour at the moment. So you could do something like that would look rather pretty, wouldn't it? So we we'll just go around like that. And then all you're going to do is take your glue and layer up your, your butterfly. Like, oops, like that. Oh. Not making a very good job of this, I'm afraid. So, like that. And then the final layer, like that. Okay. And then I like to just press my finger in and sort of pull the um, wings up. Because, you know, what's the point in having a layered butterfly if it's kind of completely flat? So, you know, I think it's nice to then pull your wings about so that you've got a more flappy, more flappy appearance like that. Okay. And then, woo, sorry, it's moving around. And then let's try that Martha Stewart 
butterfly in the middle just to see how that looks. So again, just ink that up a bit. And that would go in there. Oh, I mean, how gorgeous does that look? And, you know, I've never tried doing that before. But, yeah, it just kind of occurred to me, actually, only while I was talking just now. But, I mean, it really makes quite a pretty centre, doesn't it? You know, quite a pretty way to finish these off. So, I mean, technically it's a fourth layer. But, yeah, I mean, fourth layer slash centre. Centre piece, you know. How gorgeous does that look? So pretty, isn't it? So, yeah, that's that. Now, what I did suddenly think this morning was, I don't know whether I could get away with actually gluing them together before cutting them. So, for instance, now, if I just cut this down and then like that. Oops. Now, the problem is, am I going to manage to cut uh, glue, you know, where it needs to be, i.e. in the centre of the body? I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe that's where my problem will come. But if I fold it, for instance, that then tells me where my centre is going to be. Glue that like that and there. And then I'm wondering whether, obviously, they're now held together instead of kind of like singular, might just help with the cutting process. Or, if, I mean, of course, you know, I'm doing a video, but, or you could leave it to dry. I mean, you know, that's not really probably the best thing to do while you're doing a video. But if you then left that to dry, your pieces would be, you know, definitely held together. And then you could obviously cut around them. Oops, cut around them. So, like that. Now, I just like to cut around them. I don't bother drawing around them or anything. But, I mean, of course you could do that. If you would prefer to, you know, draw around your template and do it that way, there's no reason why you couldn't do that instead. But, I mean, to be honest, because I picked a very simple, you know, butterfly shape that's not kind of too fussy and, you know, fiddly to do, I don't think it's really necessary to have to cut around it. It you know, it cuts out pretty easily anyway. Um, so, I mean, obviously the only disadvantage is from the inking point of view, because you'd now have to kind of ink this, you know, like this, if you see what I mean. So just pulling your wings apart. But, you know, it's not, you know, not a big deal. So I'm going to leave that to dry before I ink that. So that's the ones with the, obviously, template. And like I say, you can definitely mix them up with some colours. So I'm just going to have a sip of my tea again. Okay, so let's try one with the pink. So I'm just going to come down here because, um, yeah, my piece of paper is a bit tatty here. But, I mean, it's such a gorgeous paper, isn't it? So I think for this, I might prefer it with um, book page instead of sheet music. So I've got a couple of book pages here which are, you know, still together at the glued part. So if I just pop that there and then, you know, just as we did before, kind of fold them in where the crease is going to be and then just whoops, glue those together. I mean, I just think this is quite nifty because it's then, you know, completely glued together rather than moving around. Like I say, mine is still moving around because, of course... <laughs> I'm not waiting for the glue to dry. If you waited for the glue to dry, it would be properly, you know, properly together. So just going to cut my piece down a bit so it's more, you know, manageable in terms of size. And then let's just get my template. Oops, best check that I've got my text up the right way. So put my template where that middle crease is, like that. And then just literally cut around that like this I mean like I say I don't think I've ever even done any of these freehand um, ones with the template in a sort of patterned paper so I mean I don't know it might be going to look rubbish but you know hopefully it's going to look nice I don't see why it would look rubbish but hey stranger things have happened so just cut that down like that 
Okay, oops. So obviously just round my, my wing there. So, I mean, you can probably see, you know, I've not made a very good job of cutting it, but I mean, it really is not going to be that noticeable because once you obviously, you know, put something in for the center, you ink up your edges, it's just going to look like a super pretty butterfly. So, you know, really don't stress too much if you kind of go off a little bit and it's, you know, not particularly straight or, you know, it goes a bit wonky. I really don't think it's going to be the end of the world. So let's just have another look and see if I've got any butterflies that would go. I've got a sort of ivory looking one. So let's just ink that up. In fact, I've got some, oh, well, I was going to say pinky colour, but it's a bit more purpley really than pink, but let's just try this. It might, might look okay. It might look absolutely rubbish, but let's just try. Okay. Well, that's not too bad. So ink that around. Oh, how pretty does that look as a centre? That just looks so gorgeous, doesn't it? So, yep, let's just pop that down. Oops. Okay. Pop that in the centre just there. And like I say, I mean, I will ink around, you know, the actual base butterflies themselves. Um, but, you know, for the moment, I'll just leave that to kind of dry in place but super pretty isn't it and then I could always put like a little gem in the center of that Martha Stewart butterfly as well so as it has a bit more detail you know as well so I'm just going to finish my tea okay right so that's those and then obviously the process for the shaped butterflies you know the the printed butterflies is exactly the same but you've got, you know, your shaped butterfly to go or to use as a template. Oops. Seem to have lots, lots stuck together there anyway. So, uh, yeah, that was weird, wasn't it? So this here, I'm going to just cut down on this book page. Oops. Like that. And then I think that method of the, you know, the fold in the centre is quite handy. So we then know where to glue. Just pop the glue here in the centre. Okay. And then here. See on that centre. Like that. Okay. And then we can just take that. Cut around. So, I mean, the only thing that I would say here is... You know, because you're going to have to be cutting these out, you know, a few times, you might as well want to be a little bit choosy about the shape butterfly that you pick. Some butterflies are going to be, you know, more fiddly than others for cutting. You know, you're going to want to pick something that's reasonably straightforward or reasonably, yeah, reasonably kind of easy to cut out because, you know, it's just going to make the process easier for you and less, you know, tiresome when you're cutting around it. So... Like that. Okay. And then obviously got my little wings, which I can just then flap out and separate like that. So obviously, you know, as with the others, I will just save that and ink that, you know, once the glue has dried. But how pretty does that look? I mean, I have made a bit of a rubbish job of cutting it, but, you know, it really doesn't matter because I, you know, definitely, definitely think... Once these are inked up and you've put centres in or, you know, gems or whatever, you're not even going to notice, you know, what, what this actual centrepiece looks like, to be honest. So that is literally all there is to them. Sorry about that. I just had to stop and sneeze. Um, so that's literally all there is to them. So we're just going to get mass making. And I think what I'll do is um, cut down my pieces of paper um, and then glue them together and then do the centres. So that's going to be kind of my procedure, I think, for how to do these. So I'm just, first of all, going to layer them up. Oops. Layer them up onto, like, say, book page or sheet music, depending on, you know, what I'm actually having them on. Cut that down so as I get smaller, you know, smaller, more manageable pieces. 
like that, okay. And then, you know, cut them all out kind of afterwards. So, yeah, I think that's probably how I want to do them. I think, actually, these, um, you know, the printed ones are better with the book page. I don't know whether that's because I find them a little bit too fussy to look at if they've got the sheet music. You know, it feels like that's a little bit too, yeah, too much going on. Um, but I think they're better you know, with book page instead of sheet music. But again, you know, that's personal preference. And yeah, I just think for me, that's definitely better. You know, to, to my eye, that, that looks better. So just pop that one on there. Like that. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of layer them all up at the side and then sort of cut round them afterwards. So, yeah, let's just kind of have a relax now, have a catch up, you know, hear about everybody's week. And, um, yeah, I'm going to obviously bore the tears out of you guys telling you about my craft room makeover slash move. It's not really a makeover, it is a complete move. Um, yeah, because, of course, that's taken up my entire week. So that's like the, yeah, the... <laughs> The only thing really that I've got to talk about is because I've done nothing else other than moving my craft room. So, yeah. So I'll start out by saying, you know, I hope everyone's week has started out well. Um, if you follow my follow my channel, you'll know that, you know, I film these videos on a Monday, ready for them to go up for you guys on the Tuesday. So, you know, for me, this always feels like the closest thing to a live that I do because... My other videos are all generally filmed ahead. Um, you know, so, yeah, I, I don't feel like we're kind of like really having a sort of live situation, if you know what I mean, because I try not to talk about things that might be too rele relevant to the here and now, because, of course, you know, they may not go up for several weeks, in which case they'll be completely, you know, irrelevant by the time that they've gone up. Um but yeah, so I love doing the mass making because we can actually have like a sort of real life catch up of, you know, what's currently been going on. So, um, yeah, so I hope that everybody's week has started out well. And, um, you know, hopefully you're kind of doing some nice craft projects, having a nice time and yeah, just enjoying yourselves. I have to say the sun is shining today. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous day. And yeah, feel really, really excited. So I'm just going to go and grab my smoothie and um, then I will tell you all about my craft room. Right, I am back. So uh, yep, have my smoothie now. So hopefully, um, yeah, be a little bit um, better kind of at working. So yep. Let's just get going again. So I've got here as well some blue paper. Well, this is um, more of a bluey green, actually. It looked blue over the other side, but yeah, it's actually quite green looking. Um, and I thought we could make some with this. So this is obviously my food coloured paper. Um, but again, you know, I thought we could make some using this. And say, for instance, here, I've got a bluey greeny butterfly. So there's no reason why we couldn't then have this as the layers which I think would look really pretty so yeah trying to be a bit more experimental obviously just with my um papers that I'm using and the colors that I'm using so like that okay I probably could only do a couple more because um yeah I'm probably now being a bit overly ambitious thinking I'm going to get all of these done but anyway um Oh, let's do a couple more of the uh oh let's yeah let's have him on the on the sheet music right so yes back to obviously talking about the the move so yeah my goodness it has been so full-on so yep the move um my daughter is kind of semi in her new room she's having to share it at the moment with my son because of course you know the loft is still not full of my stuff you know don't get me wrong we have done a lot but there's still quite a bit of my stuff up there and of course you know we haven't decorated it or anything like that up there um so yeah it's kind of far from being done at the moment so he's kind of still in his room so him and my daughter are kind of like sharing a bedroom at the moment um which is a 
bit of a shame because obviously you know, talked about you know the fact that we have got mess literally everywhere in the whole house um you know the contents of my daughter's bedroom has been kind of out on our landing you know for mm, like a week now or whatever well obviously it's still there because you know my son's stuff is still in his room at the moment so of course you know we can't then put her things in the cupboards or anything because his things are still in there so yeah it's um yeah well not proving more time consuming because of course we did expect it to be time consuming but yeah it's definitely it's been a mammoth 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 task I have to say but you know hopefully we're kind of nearing well I wouldn't say nearing the end to be honest because there is a lot more to do but you know maybe like oh dare I say two-thirds I don't know I don't know whether we're two-thirds of the way through but yeah I mean hopefully we're quite a way quite a way through the project so you know we're definitely a lot further than we were obviously this time last week so yeah anyway very exciting times um so my actual craft room move wow it has been <laughs> yeah a big 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 task um so I'm just going to apologize again I still have not got to any emails or anything like that so I'm really 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 sorry I know I'm just really awful and I just I just really apologize honestly I'm not just being you know difficult on purpose it's just I really do need to kind of crack on and get things done because of course you know until my room's properly done I can't actually properly video if you know what I mean so um yeah that's kind of got to take priority because otherwise my videos will kind of fall behind and you know then I, before I know it I won't have videos in the bank because I will have kind of sucked them up and used them um so you know it's kind of yeah the essential priority I suppose at the moment is to get my room finished so that it's then you know normal normal filming and all the rest of it can then take place um but yeah anyway getting there and um yeah I mean the other thing is and I know you know I hadn't really mentioned this but in case you're wondering why there's such a rush and such a deadline so the other thing that we're trying to do is you know obviously bills and all of that kind of stuff is all really you know going through the roof isn't it at the moment and um you know obviously if you follow my channel you'll know that you know it's I've recently got divorced and things and yeah I mean well let's just say that um you know there's a few issues with the you know yeah my husband kind of obviously you know contributing towards things and um yeah so I'm kind of struggling a little bit um so what we're going to do is we are going to hopefully, you know, hopefully, the plan being, we're going to hopefully try and rent our house out for a couple of events that go on here in our local area. So that's partly, you know, why we're on such a tight deadline. I mean, obviously, the tight deadline for me is my craft area. Of course, that's, you know, my tight deadline. Um, but on top of that, these events that we want to get our house kind of rented for um they are in June so you know we have to make sure that the house is looking like you know as good as it possibly can come June so you know otherwise obviously providing my craft room you know craft area was done there wouldn't be necessarily such a rush factor to actually get the rest done um but yeah because we're obviously trying to you know meet that deadline as well then obviously that's kind of putting extra kind of pressure on which you know that's a good thing I think I mean yeah I think that's probably a good thing because you know otherwise who knows we maybe would be a bit more complacent and it would drag on for weeks yet so yeah I mean having a deadline is probably quite good but oh I can't tell you last week I just looked absolutely dreadful come Saturday I thought oh my gosh I look about 10 years older I looked so awful so yeah <laughs> I have been smothering myself in extra cream at night when going to bed and things like that to try and um <laughs> try and look a bit better you know I think obviously your uh your skin can't really weather the moments of stress and like workload 
quite the same when you get older as it could when you were young. So, um, yeah, kind of just honestly by Saturday, I thought, what's going on with my face? I just look so terrible. And no amount of makeup was kind of covering it. So, um, yeah, hopefully, um, you know, going to sort of lessen the pressure slightly now. And hey, if not, I've uh, got more cream now. So, yeah, because I also had to, um, you know, buy buy stronger cream. So, <laughs> honestly, what a nightmare. But yeah, super excited anyway. So let's focus on the positive bits here. So yeah, super, super excited. Um, you know, like I say, my daughter, she's not necessarily as excited as I'd hoped because, of course, you know, she's not really properly got her rim as her rim, if you see what I mean. So, you know, her things are not really in there. They're still kind of all over the landing. Um, so, you know, it's hard for her to kind of feel like it's her rim. And she even said to me this morning, oh, you know, I can't wait for it to be kind of mine. She said, because, you know, he's still things like having his breakfast up there and leaving his bowl on the side. And I mean, I just had to laugh inwardly because I thought, are you kidding me? You're moaning about someone leaving mess in your bedroom. I mean, she's like the messiest person on the planet. But, you know, clearly once it's affecting her and her environment, she doesn't like it. I did laugh. I just thought, oh my goodness. The irony of this, she actually thinks someone else is messing up her space. You know, but anyway, <laughs> maybe I will be able to remind her of this once it's all done. Every time she's leaving stuff. I'm trying to get her a bit trained at the moment with, um, you know, like when she finishes her meal. You know, so like this morning, obviously it's just me and her when we're having breakfast. And um, I mean, I don't have my breakfast at that point, but I sit with her and I normally put my makeup on and um, have a cup of tea while she's having her breakfast. And yeah, I'm trying to get her in the habit now of, you know, when you finish your breakfast, you take your bowl and you know you empty out anything that's left in the bowl and you know either put your bowl in the sink or put it in the dishwasher so um yeah trying to kind of train her but oh my goodness it's been going on and on for ages and you know she still just tries to get down and you know go off and I'm like uh excuse me come back where are you going you know and she's like what I say uh your plate or your bowl you know so yeah Honestly, and we've run out of all food at the moment as well. But I mean, we've got, you know, we've got plenty still to be eating. But saying we've run out of all food that people want to be eating. So, yeah. But hey, I think sometimes a bit like crafting, that's when you can kind of create the most interesting meals is when you have to <laughs> bake do with the stuff that's left. Oh, I don't know whether the children would agree with that. But yeah, hopefully we're going to have some creative meals off the back of what's left in the in the fridge and the cupboard and what have you I mean the cupboard is is still really full to be honest I like I say it's really just do we have the things that people want to be eating you know um this morning I'd actually run out of milk so yeah I had to have my cup of tea my first cup of tea with almond milk which was not so nice but yeah anyway we will see um Oh, what was the other thing I was going to say? So I've been trying to sell some of my furniture as well, obviously, that has been moved out of the room. Um, so, I mean, yeah, obviously, thank heavens for like eBay and Facebook, you know, where obviously I managed to get quite a bit of things for my new room. Um, and for my daughter's room, managed to get her desk and stuff from there. And hopefully my son, you know, now he's moving to the loft, I'm, yeah, I've got like a few things in like my watch list you know um that I'm going to hopefully try and get for his room so yeah should be kind of good I mean hopefully and that will also mean they are assembled and I don't have to assemble them although I have to say a couple of things I have then gone to get only to be mortified to find that people have disassembled them I mean I haven't gone to get them my mum and dad went and got them but you know and it's like oh goodness sake I was hoping this was going to be you know non-assembly pieces because they are used you know but I guess you know people have had to disassemble them to you know not have them massively stored in their house if you see what I mean but I did manage to get rid of my daughter's wardrobe yesterday somebody bought that um 
you know, not for very much money. I mean, actually, I don't think it's even going to pay for a meal out for us, <laughs> which I'd said to the kids, oh, you know, from the money, we'll go for a meal out this week. Yeah, I don't think there's even enough to get a meal out. But, um, <laughs> you know, at least it's gone from the rim because uh, it was looking so messy. I mean, it's still so messy because, of course, that's the only thing that has gone. Um, there's a lot of other things like, you know, some light chest of drawers, a little bedside table, uh, there's a radiator cabinet, oh, you name it, it's in there. Oh, her bed, <laughs> that's still in there. So, yeah, you can't actually physically get in that room now. So, you know, yeah, hopefully. Hopefully I will uh, get rid of all that stuff over the next few days because uh, it would be, like, really good to not have so much mess everywhere. But I can't tell you, I mean, obviously, so this week I'm going to have to focus on getting my son's room done. Um, oh, it's driving me potty because, of course, I've now got my new craft room. I want to be in here, A, finishing organising it because, you know, it's it started out, I was really being good and, you know, putting things very organised and all that. But obviously, as then the time went by, things ended up getting kind of slung in here. So, you know, I want to kind of, yeah, get in here and properly organise things. Of course, I did hardly any crafting last week, so I want to do that. I want to obviously get back on my laptop, you know, all of those things. And, yeah, just, oh, I can't wait to get his, his room done and do those things. So, hopefully, I'm going to start wallpapering his his new room up in the loft. Um, yeah, maybe after this video even, so... Yeah, probably after this video, I'm going to go straight up there and um, get cracking with that. Because also, he's been so amazing and helped me such a lot, um, you know, with my craft room move that I don't want him to think that, you know, I'm not now cracking on with his room, you know. So, um, yeah, I want to demonstrate that I'm, you know, just as eager to get his room done as I obviously have been to get mine done. So, and I mean, of course I am, because, you know, until he's got his stuff up there, then my daughter can't put her stuff away. So, I mean, it's all, you know, like a bit of a snowball effect. So, until, yeah, one thing happens, another thing can't happen, which means, obviously, the house stays messy. So, um, yeah, it is in my interest very much to get his room done, you know. But, yeah. So, I don't know whether we're going to even get to the cinema or anything this week. Um... Yeah, I don't know. But having said that, you know, it does come to the point where you kind of need to have a bit of a break. I mean, like yesterday, I probably was in here, I don't know, a couple of hours in the morning. And then, um, what did I do then? Oh, I had to go to the dump, you know, to take a lot of things to the dump. So that took up some time. Um, had to go and take some things back to the shop. You know, things that I bought for my daughter's room that then actually weren't really suitable. And, um, yeah, that involved about three different shops. Uh, then, obviously, I had to try and arrange with the person coming to get the wardrobe and things. So, you know, I had quite a big break yesterday from this. Um, then, obviously, photographed all the furniture and things ready for, you know, listing to try and sell it. So, yeah, I kind of, like, had a bit of a break yesterday. I didn't really do much in terms of the room move. Because, you know, there were other things that kind of needed to be done. Um, but that said, I think actually having a bit of a break from it was probably pretty good. So, you know, it had come to the point where I was like, oh, you know, not at the end of my tether. But, you know, where you're just like, oh, I can't really see straight now. It's like, oh, I need to kind of have a breather. So, yeah, I think it was quite a good thing to actually have a bit of a breather. So, um, yeah. Yeah. What was that? Um, bless him, my middle son. I mean, he didn't have a breather. He just still cracked on with his new rim. So, you know, stripped like the old wallpaper and things like that. So, because I said to him, you know, if you strip the wallpaper, I'll, you know, get started wallpapering that like tomorrow. So, of course, you know, he wanted to do that. So, yeah, I have to say, not really looking forward to doing that wallpapering. I mean, I know I talked about this like several times, but you know, I've gone from never having wallpapered to, I think it was last Friday I started, you know, my first ever wallpapering. And now I've wallpapered two rooms completely, you know, this is in the space of like obviously, you know, just over the week. Um, and now I'm gonna go on to my third room. So to be honest, <laughs> really gone off it now. At first I thought, oh, actually, 
it's okay. I'm not, you know, not finding it too bad. But, and I said to my friend at the gym this morning, I think maybe the first bit of wallpaper was, um, you know, just very kind of easy to hang and very forgiving wallpaper. Since then, it's kind of got worse and worse. So the next lot of wallpaper that I did was the wallpaper I've got in my craft area. Um, that was slightly less forgiving and less, yeah, less easy to hang. Um, it mainly because it was quite teary, you know, so when I was kind of like cutting it, it actually tore very easily, which of course, that's not ideal, is it? Um, and then the next lot was what I obviously have put in my daughter's room, that sort of tropical wallpaper, which of course she's not now got the brick with that. But I have got the brick in my craft area. So, yep, when I do the, the you know, reveal, then you will obviously see how it's kind of decorated. Not that you can barely see anything of anything because it's mainly covered up now. Um, but, yeah, so... Oh, I can't remember now what I was even saying, to be honest. But, anyway, so the brick wallpaper, that's in here. But it was the brick wallpaper that was this very forgiving paper. Um, my daughter's tropical paper, that was a nightmare. Literally to the point that I thought, I think this paper's actually stretching as I put it on. Because you'd line it up at the top. And then, honestly, by the bottom, it was completely, like, not in the same place, if you know what I mean. And I said to my son, I think it's actually stretchy wallpaper. And that just sounds like a crazy thing to say. But, honestly, I think it honestly did. Whether or not it would shrink again once it dries out, I'm not sure. But again, I thought, well, who cares? It's going to be mainly covered up with furniture. So, yeah, it's not really the end of the world. But anyway, so I hope that my son's um, room is not going to be quite such a nightmare as that. Of course, it's going to be a bit of a nightmare because it's weird shaped walls. But anyway. Uh, right. OK, so we have got obviously all of these little butterflies now. So we can obviously ink them up and do some pretty centres and things like that. So just kind of spread them out um yeah and the other thing is thank you so much to everyone who commented on like today but for you guys yesterday's video with your feedback about the you know my new desk setup and what have you now I have to say I think I'm going to have to move it anyway because um the camera is here to my left and a it actually fell off when I first <laughs> first hit record this morning it kind of like fell off of the desk so yeah it's not kind of clamped on very well um because there's a smaller ledge so I will tell you all about this kind of um yeah when I come to do the kind of um craft tool reveal I suppose but yeah it obviously has a smaller like ledge to clip onto and yeah so it right also my son needs to do me a couple of plugs. So at the moment, my craft, you know, my glue gun is kind of like across the room with a, what do you call it? You know, extension block. Because obviously I need it on my right hand side, not my left, which is where the plugs are. Um, yeah, so it actually fell off this morning when I first came on to do the video. So it's clearly not kind of on there the best. And on top of that, I keep knocking it with my elbow because it's quite, um, well, quite close to my elbow, I suppose. So, yeah, it's not really in the ideal spot. But I might have to have a look and see if I can get a completely different, um, you know, type of tripod type thing. Because I don't think it's um, going to work because my desk has got a smaller um like space for the clamp type thing i know this is probably not really making much sense but yeah where it clamps on it's it's not got enough space the lip you know for it to hook on if you see what i mean which is i guess why it fell off you know in the first place today so yeah i might have to actually get different um you know all together different Um, oh, tripod. It's not, it's not a tripod. I was trying to think, like holder. Anyway, camera holder. 
So, yeah, not a tripod, but, you know, that type of thing. So, yeah, we'll kind of see, but, yeah, I'm just kind of, I'm aware that it's not in the best place at the moment. So, you know, from a working point of view, because it's, like, in my way. I did forget to ink that um, first, so I think it's easier to ink first, because, obviously, once you put the gems on, it's got a bit of a lump, you know, that's just in the way a little bit, so... Okay, there we go. Okay. So, yeah, clearly I have watched nothing on telly. <laughs> Couldn't even tell you what I've watched. Um, yeah, I've not really watched anything, to be honest. Um, yeah, just done nothing. Nothing to talk about at all, apart from just moving stuff about. So, yeah, no news whatsoever, I'm afraid. There we go. Oh, dear. Got these stuck on me now. So, yeah, they're pretty, aren't they? Let's do um, a couple, maybe. I don't know whether this could take a flower. But just to kind of mix up the centres so we've got some different things going on, really. Mm, maybe that, maybe that in the centre. Mm. The body, I think, is a little bit long on here. It's not kind of, you know, working really with the body shape. So I might have to just stick with bling after all. But yeah, I mean, just play around because I'm sure there must be loads of other things that you could use, you know, instead of just bling all the time. Um, but it's just a case of like experimenting and finding, you know, what else would be ideal, really. Okay, so just slip this down. Whoops. Like that. Okay. Ooh. Oh, come on. Okay. So that looks pretty, doesn't it? Oops. Well, it would do if I didn't have glue stuck all over it. Oh, come on. Just try and pick out those glue threads. But yeah. You know, I mean, I could just leave the rest, to be honest, until I come to use them and then decide what to have as the centres then. But let's just do... One or two more, shall we? That's probably a bit long. That with the four. Probably doesn't really need four, does it? So let's just cut that down and do just three. Okay, right. Uh, I can't see. That's the only other thing. I can't see on my camera to see how long I've been filming for. So just little things like this are obviously things that I need to kind of tweak because, yeah, obviously being able to see how long you've been filming for would be kind of helpful, wouldn't it? So, um, yeah, I'm going to have a look, you know, when I get a chance and see what other kinds of um, camera holders. I mean, it's just a phone holder. Obviously, I film just on my phone, but see what other phone holders and things that I could get, which might be, you know, good to actually use. Um, but I just, yeah, I wanted to kind of come along, obviously, on my video that I've put up today, I for you guys yesterday. I just wanted to check how it is kind of light-wise and everything else. And touch wood, I seem to have got positive feedback so far. So thank you so much to everyone who, you know, took the time to comment. I really do appreciate that. Right, let's have a look and see how many that we have done. So we've done one, two, I think that was already done. Three, oh no, that was already done. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Wow, that is a lot of butterflies, isn't it? So, I mean, obviously, like I say, they do pretty much all need inking and things like that. And, of course, they do need centres if they're going to have centres. Um, but I can just do that kind of in slow time and things. So, you know, no rush or anything to do any of those things. I can just do them as and when I come to use them. So I'm just going to quickly try this little purpley coloured flower in that and just see whether that looks cute. Yeah, that's quite cute on there, isn't it? So let's just quickly pop that one down. Okay. There we go. Oh dear. There we go. So that one looks cute like that. So yes, I really must actually start using these instead of hoarding them because now of course I've got a whole nother 17 more. I don't really need to hoard them, do I? And to be honest, actually they don't really take very long to um make, you know. So it's completely ridiculous why I'm even hoarding them in the first place. But yeah, sometimes just can't help myself. So um yeah, anyway, I hope that you like them. And, you know, thank you so much for watching. Hope you all have a fantastic day and I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks then. Bye.